Okay, let's do it. Stand by, everyone. Great to you, Wolf. Well, get your one track, go. Asanjay, what, what are we talking about, about these products that are supposed to be uh, helping us to be safe? Yeah, I mean, we have a certain expectation of safety when it comes to all the products that we use in our everyday lives. But I can tell you, first of all, when we started digging into this, it, it's sort of an alphabet soup out there. You have the Consumer Product Safety Commission. Uh, you have the Food and Drug Administration. But it really seems to come down uh, on the EPA, the Environmental Protection Agency, to try and make sure the chemicals that we're exposed to in the air and the water all around us are safe. But, you know, as, as we started to dig into this a little bit, it, it is a very daunting task, the task that the EPA has in front of them. Let me give you a little bit of context. Uh, there, there's about 80,000 different chemicals out there, uh, and, and we are exposed to a lot of them on a pretty regular basis. Only of those, about only about 200 have been tested uh, specifically for safety concerns, and only about five have actually been regulated. So that gives you a little bit of context of just how big an issue that this is, Wolf. Does this mean the others aren't necessarily safe? Well, the answer to that is, is we simply don't know for sure. And, and, and the way things work with regard to chemicals, and it's a little different for pharmaceuticals or pesticides, but with chemicals, it's sort of a innocent until proven guilty mentality. Uh, there's not a lot of requirements to try and prove things are safe before they go to market. I'll give you one quick example. Uh, there's this chemical out there known as TCE. It's sort of a, a grease-cutting substance. It's used in the military. It's used in the industry. It's been used for decades. Uh, over time, they started to see that water that had been contaminated in some way with TCE was causing an increase in birth defects, was causing an increase in childhood leukemia. The problem is that uh, th there was no health testing done on this particular chemical beforehand. So the way people find out something is a problem is people get sick, and only then is something taken off the market. And here was something else that was sort of interesting. What you're looking at here are essentially redacted papers based on something known as confidential business information. This is quite striking, Wolf. Uh, when, when a company tests chemicals, uh, d does the animal testing, and finds out that the chemical is dangerous, they're under no obligation to disclose publicly what that chemical is or even disclose uh, the name of the company that's producing that chemical. So that information is simply not available to the public. Now, we talked to Lisa Jackson about this, who is the current EPA administrator, and uh, the fact of the matter is that, that that's changing slightly. What she tells us is that uh, chemicals that are already in the public database do have to be made public, but if, if chemicals have been confidential all along, they will remain confidential, and there's about 16,000 chemicals that fall into that particular category. As you know, Sanjay, there's been a lot of rumblings out there about either changing the law, changing the way the EPA does business. Uh, what are you hearing? What's going on? I'm hearing the same things, and I think you're, you're alluding to Senator Frank Lautenberg in New Jersey, who's specifically trying to put a bill uh, within the next month. That he's been sick in the hospital, as you may know, Wolf, but he's trying to do that within the next month or so, uh, called the Kids Safe Chemical Act. And really, the way to think about that, it's sort of changing the paradigm from uh, innocent until proven guilty to uh, guilty until proven innocent, in the sense that it has to be tested uh, before it can actually come to market. And again, pesticides already treated that way pharmaceuticals already treated that way, and at least with respect to kids, they want to make sure that any new potential exposures out there are tested for, for health effects before they ever come to market. And again, uh, we talked to uh, EPA Administrator Lisa Jackson about that, and she says she supports that. There is some pushback from industry on things like that, but I think Senator Frank Lautenberg seems to have some momentum, at least with regard to kids, Wolf. Yeah, let's wish Sen Senator Lautenberg the best of health. He's got some uh, stomach uh, cancer issues, but, it, but it's curable, and we hear He's going to do just fine, at least we hope so. Thanks very much, Sanjay, for that. And to our viewers, uh, this programming note, mark your calendar. Sanjay's upcoming documentary, Toxic Town USA, it debuts on March 20th, 8 p.m. Eastern only here on CNN.